Nikita Koloff, the Russian nightmare, no, the devil's nightmare here from It's Time to Man Up, challenging men to step into their true manhood. Your chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just a few seconds. Enjoy it, share it, but most of all, thank you for listening to the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. The pandemic has reminded us how fragile and unpredictable life is. Have you thought about your loved ones and their financial security if the unexpected happens? Plan for the future with PRCUA Life. Since 1873, the Polish Roman Catholic Union of America has been protecting its members and their families financially. Join PRCUA Life today and take advantage of affordable life insurance plans, competitive annuity rates, and additional member benefits. You can even lower your income tax bill and boost your retirement income by opening a new PRCUA Life annuity or transferring your existing account. Earn up to 3.75 APY with a one-year guarantee and $500 minimum deposit. Visit PRCUA.org or call your local PRCUA representative at 336-776-7456. PRCUA Life, protecting life through all its stages. Welcome to If Not For God, stories of hopelessness that turn to hope. Here is your host, Mike Zwick. If not for God, Michael Zwick. And really, this is an if not for God thing, man, these dreams. Yeah, we, uh, I was actually went back to, uh, I think it was the January 13th dream with Pastor Dana Coverstone from that show. And at the beginning of the show, you actually told a couple of dreams. And I've been thinking about those. Can you, can you remind us? Yeah, these were back in January, and I'd actually forgotten them until we listened to that show just a minute yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. And, and what I remembered was just this absolute chaos. Like everybody was fleeing, but my family wasn't there. I was by myself. I was trying to make my way to somewhere, but I didn't even know where I was going. And that was the part that was like really confusing to me. Mm-hmm. And the part that was very convicting to me was in spite of how terrified I was, I didn't cry out to God. And it really, really bothered me that that somehow or another, I wasn't aware that there was an answer to my problem. And everybody was in these uniforms, but they weren't in uniform. It was just, it was total chaos. And nobody knew where they were going or why they were going. Um, Actually, I was in a tank at one point. It's just weird. And I woke up and I got mad at myself over that. And mad at myself because I wasn't looking for my family. Mm -hmm. And then I had another dream, very similar. This time my family's in it, and I still don't look out for God. Yeah. And so the the next morning, fortunately, I got to spend some time with God. And, and really, this show is helping me see, like, man, I've I've been working on that part of the 16th Psalm where David said, you know, I have placed the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Right. And therefore, my heart is glad my glory rejoices and my flesh rests in a secure place. Like that's where I need to be, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know, always in prayer, always there with God at my right hand. It's, it's, it's like, man, if I could get to that place where I'm even there at night, wouldn't that be good? That would be a matter of fact, it says in uh, Acts 2 17 in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Are you saying I'm old? Uh, well, I'm old <laughs> because I've been doing a lot of dreaming too. And so our, our friend Angela Pierce actually said that to me uh, this past Saturday. But you know, when I think about this, I, I had never really had prophetic dreams until probably around five years ago. And around five years ago, I had a dream where our home that we had just moved into was being broken into. And I told my wife, I said that, hey, the, the home is actually going to be broken into this week. And uh, she says, oh, no. I said, and sure enough, that week the home was broken into. And I was like, okay. And then I had another dream where I was dreaming about my son, and my son had fallen, and it, and it appeared as if he had died. And it was the worst dream I've ever had in my life. But the next night, something told me to, there were some books in the house and said, take these books and get them out of the house. So I got the books out of the house. It was like three o'clock in the morning. I never do this, but I got the books out of the house. And then what the, were the books? Just some random books. But the next day, <laughs> um, the next day, my son fell and he actually hurt his leg. 
And, and by the way, the books were from a long time ago. It was from like 15 years ago that my wife had had or whatever. And I had just remembered seeing them and something told me to get them out of the house. But my son ended up breaking his leg, but it wasn't that bad. He ended up healing about six months, six weeks later. And, but something told me after that, if I hadn't have gotten the books out of the house, um, then it, it, it could have been different. So uh, fast forward probably a few years now, I have a dream where in this dream, there was this guy with long hair who was trying to get me. And uh, so in the dream, he was trying to get me, whatever. And I just remember I was trying to get away from him. It was just kind of crazy, this, that, the other. And um, right before I woke up that morning, um, I saw these green kind of tick looking bugs that were crawling all over my hands. And then I wake up and I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, I just, I just thought it was another dream. Cause I have other dreams as well that don't mean anything, you know, but something about this dream seemed different after that. And then, so I, I walked around the side of the house, um, where, and all of a sudden I see that green tick looking bug that I saw in my dream when I was taking out the trash. And I was like, oh man, this means something. So I'm going around selling insurance that day. And sure enough, who is it? But I'm driving down the street in Burlington and this guy that I see in the dream is on my right-hand side in a van. He tries to hide himself. And I was supposed to pull into the house right across the street where this guy was at. Well, if I had enough, I ended up, I kept driving. And so I just left. But I wonder if I had have just pulled into that house right across the street, what would have happened? So fast forward to, gosh, this was probably 2020. I start having a bunch of dreams again. Um, but in 2020, I had a, uh, I had a dream at the beginning of the year, um, where there was just chaos. And I remember, I remember, I think I talked about it on the show where there was just chaos in America. And I remember seeing smoke in the background. So I guess there was a fire and I saw a lady with a gun and I hadn't really thought about it that much, but I guess if you look back at it now, <laughs> there were riots, they were setting places, cities on cities were on fire, um, and there were people, there were armed protesters going around with guns and, uh, there was chaos last year. Um, so then I'm trying to think of what else it was, but then there was, uh, something else. It was last, probably last, uh, November, uh, where I had it, it was the only vision as far as I've ever had. And, and I had a vision, it was, it was at night and there were people, it was like, it wasn't a war war, but people were like fighting each other. It was skirmishes. And that's the only vision I've ever had, but that was a vision that I had. And then come, I think it was December or January, I had a dream where President Donald Trump was in the dream and there was an American flag that was in the background. And all of a sudden, people were screaming or somebody was yelling, inflation, inflation, inflation. And then I woke up. What's well, funny, the few months after that, people said there's not going to be inflation, there's not going to be inflation. And now recently, everybody's talking about inflation. The dream I had probably a week or two ago, I started off in the dream and I was with my wife and kids and all of a sudden we got separated and I never saw them again. But what happened was, was that I kept going along and all of a sudden I remember that the prices of everything just started to skyrocket. Everything started to go high, sky high. The cost of food went sky high. And then all of a sudden, continuing with the chaos, I saw people driving on the grass and people were just going crazy. It was just, it was insane. And then I remember kind of similar to what you were talking about, Robbie, where you said there was no hope. And I was walking around and it just seemed like there was no hope. And I remember in that dream, I did not cry out to God and I wish I would have. Uh, but at the end of the dream, the good news was, was that I found like a sanctuary and I found a place where there was water and they gave me something to drink. And I remember, I remember there was peace. And then a couple of other things, there were a couple of minor dreams that I had. One of the dreams that I had, it was a two-bedroom condo. And I remember looking at condos before, and these condos were probably about $150,000. In this dream, I remember I bought the condo, two-bedroom condo, and it was $595,000. <laughs> and then the last dream that I had, it was within the last week. It was my dad was trying to tell me something. And he was trying to tell me, he was trying to get the words out of his mouth, um, but it was, it was like he couldn't, the sound wouldn't come out. And finally I pressed in and I said, dad, what are you trying to say? And he said, don't take the vaccine. Don't take the vaccine. And then I woke up. So here we are. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> well, it was interesting this morning. 
as I was praying and studying. It's amazing how God gives us stuff. And I, I love John chapter 1. You know, in the beginning was the Word, and the mm-hmm. Word was with God, and the Word was God. Mm-hmm. And, and that idea, I, for some reason, although I love it, love it, love it, God was like, let's go look, take a fresh look at that. And so I began to look at that, and I looked at the cross-references. And in mm-hmm. Proverbs chapter 8... Is, I was reading Proverbs 8 last night before I went to bed, but go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah you see a very similar discussion yeah. Yeah. about wisdom, yeah. which in Hebrew is chakma, okay? And, and don't miss the ma in chakma, okay? Chakma yeah. has to do with life. It has to do... But it, what it describes in that ma sound is a mem, which is water. But it's long been said that water comes from the wisdom of the Torah, mm. which makes perfect sense because Jesus mm. is living water. That's right. And the Mem is the first letter in Messiah, and mm-hmm. it is the first letter in Moses and other people that are connected with water. And when you think about the concept of baptism, so it was interesting to me that you couldn't find water. Okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're looking for hope. What do you need more than you need anything? You need Jesus. I mean, you, right. you, just, you just simply do... And inside of that wisdom that they, he would have for you is, again, he's at your right hand, and, and, and you're looking for a drink. Of course you are. Right. So is the woman of the well. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, 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 and so I think that's a beautiful thing, and it's interesting to me. We were just talking to Stu Epperson. He was sitting here with us a moment ago. Kind of making fun of our dreams, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, he, he talked about, and I like this, that he's been, before he goes to bed at night, he, he, he begins to process a verse, uh-huh. begin to use the thought thing. And actually, if you look back in, in Proverbs chapter 8, the next line talks about that wisdom hangs out with prudence, mm-hmm. and through it, you get knowledge mm-hmm. with certain devices well when you really study that particular verse it's Mm -hmm. really cool Mm -hmm. because it's almost like to get the knowledge that is talking about in that verse which has wisdom you have to mine the torah you have to mine the word of god so as you dig deep think about it Mm -hmm. like what Stu's talking about as you dig deep into that verse or that whatever it is that you're studying before you go to bed i'm hoping (laughs) personally yeah. That when we're in the midst of that, that we will actually get to the point where we can call out to God. But nonetheless, there's no doubt he's saying to us, Mike, you need me. Robbie, you need me. Right? Yeah, we, we, we need him. There was an old song and it said, oh, I need you. Yeah. Oh, I need you. Yeah. Every hour I need you. And, and so maybe for a long time, and, and I've heard people say this before, um, that you know, if we needed an education, we went to university. If we needed a, if we needed something to eat, we go to the grocery store. If we needed, uh, if we needed anything, we could almost kind of get it, we thought, on our own. But I wonder if we may be going to a place in our country where we're going to have to fully rely on God. Um, and, and J.D. Greer, I like what he said. He said, you never know that God is all you need until God is all you have. Uh, matter of fact, go, going back to that verse you were talking about, John four thirteen, Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, the woman at the well. But whoever drinks the water that I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water that I give him will become in him a fount of water springing up to eternal life. And this woman said to him, sir, give me this water <laughs> so that I will not get thirsty and have and have to keep coming back here to draw water. And so... You know, I wonder if she was really looking for the spiritual or just saying, hey, I don't have to come back and get water anymore. I, I don't know, but what do you think? I think it's one of the miraculous passages in the Bible because Jesus gives us such insight into who he really is. And when he says that that water is going to spring out into living water, uh-huh. and, and living water, like, is... If you're like me, man, you, like you're fixed to go to bed, yeah. and you just are craving something. You don't know what it is, right? Right? Like, 
Last night my wife made me chocolate pudding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she put little chunks of cream cheese in it. It was it was delightful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I thought, man, this this is the stuff right before. Right. I go <laughs> and it was. However, after I got done eating it, you know what I wanted? I was craving something. I I just don't know what it was. But have you noticed how your heart just craves yeah. things? Yeah. And, and um, I think I really like what Stu said. I, I I'm I'm really. I'm going to work on that tonight. When I start to feel that tinge, that craving, it's like a chick engine light fla yeah. flashing in my face. And right. Robbie, just what you just sang, Matt Marr, right? His song, I Need You. Yeah. Every hour I need you. Yeah. My one defense, my righteousness. Yes. Right? Oh, Lord, how I need you. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, w one of the things that I, was, that I was kind of reminded of is that I remember I told you I sold books door to door with a company called Southwestern. And I remember when the guy, Kevin Johnson, was recruiting us to do it. He said, you know what? He said, in order to do this job, you're going to go all the way across the country. You're going to sell books door to door. And I went to Appalachian State, but he said, you got to have a little Daniel Boone in you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, it, it, it kind of reminds me of the Christian life where, you know, we're, we're so used to living in our little box well, I wonder what if God is going to take us outside of our box? And I, I remember in a, a book that I, I recently read, and I believe it was by Dr. Michael Youssef, who we just just read about, and it was in um, The Third Jihad, a book that he wrote, uh, was where he said in 1900 in the Boxer Rebellion, there were a bunch of, uh, I, I guess, just Chinese people. I don't know if it was the militia or the, the military or who it was, but they completely surrounded a Christian uh, missionary site. And what they did was they blocked all but one entrance, and they drew a cross on the ground. And uh, when they drew the cross on the ground, this is what they said. They said, okay, you guys who are in there, if you come out and if you step on the cross, you'll live. But if you don't step on the cross, we're going to kill you in the firing squad. So the first seven people all came out and stepped right on the cross. Um, the eighth person who came out, it was a young lady, and she kneeled down beside the, beside the cross to pray. And then she walked right around the cross and went to her certain death. The interesting thing, there were 80-some people who were behind her. All 80-some people who were behind her all walked around the cross and were killed. So it's, it's interesting. It tells me that as a Christian, not only are we, you know, we're responsible for ourselves, but... It's interesting that people are looking to us as Christians. And you say, well, you're on the radio. No, I mean, they're looking, if you're a Christian and, you, and people know that you're a Christian, people are watching you. And, and, and in that story, other Christians were watching her and they followed her lead. I, I thought it was pretty awesome, Robbie. Oh, wow. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, you know, I've always gotten a kick out of this story that David Jeremiah um, told that when he found out he had cancer, and of course they put it on the air so people would pray for him that, that he had a lymphoma, if I recall, and he had a stem cell transplant. He went through quite a time. But he said, it's interesting. I've been getting emails ever since about how much stronger my messages have been since I've been having cancer. But he said those messages were recorded long, <laughs> mm -hmm. long before yeah. I had cancer, yeah. meaning that people hear it with different ears when they see what's going on in your life. And, and if you're familiar with my life and... Uh, the Lord's blessed me to have some challenges, yeah. you know, physically over the years. <laughs> and, and and people, I can't tell you how many people would just have come to me and said, oh, it's so inspiring as I watched you go through cancer or as I watched you go through, you know, the brain abscess or as you, you know, and, and you know, I remember um, I, I not long after the brain abscess thing, Johnny Hendricks, passed away, and I've told that story with you on the air before, but then I went and talked to a, I spoke at a church that was there in Moxville, and the people there were very familiar with my story and what I'd been through in the hospital and all that stuff. Yeah. But because of what the Holy Spirit was doing th through them watching this, again, I give him all the credit, because apart from me, I can do nothing. Right. I'm, you know, Jesus, I can't do anything apart from you. But when I gave the invitation that day, which the invitation was actually not to give your own heart to Christ, but to witness to somebody about Christ mm -hmm. at that particular church, which 
unfortunately I can't remember the name of, but it was a fairly large church in Moxville. In other words, there were hundreds of people in the audience. Every single person came forward that day. Yeah. And I know in my heart of hearts that it had to do with them perceiving, you know, that, you know, I had stayed, remained faithful throughout, you know, the, the different physical challenges that I've had. It, it's, it's amazing, you know, that, but you couldn't be more right that people are watching. And, and that's a good part of how we are blessed because, you know, Matthew 28 says, Go ye therefore make disciples, right, of all nations, baptizing them, which, by the way, is done with water, in the name of the <laughs> Father, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, right? So, and, you know, that's where we really get an opportunity to it sometimes when you think that, oh, man, this horrible stuff is happening to me. And it is horrible stuff that's happening to you. Yeah. But God allows stuff so that people that, that that you can be on display, right? Because he, he is going to, I'm trying to think of the verse, you probably know it, you know, where he's going to make Satan, you know, a spectacle based on what he does with your faith. Yeah, he 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 will. And, and one of the verses that I'm reminded of when you went through the tough time and also David Jeremiah was 2 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and needs in persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I was actually talking with uh, my friend Elena yesterday, and and uh, and she prays for people all the time to be healed, and she sees like miraculous healings. I I, I really believe that she she just has the um, she has the power of faith. Um, she has the gift of faith and the gift of it's it's just it's it's awesome. Um, but it's interesting. At the end of the conversation, we were talking. She says, "Mike, I've got this." these serious health problems with myself and they haven't gone away. And my husband who also prays for people, he's got a problem with his jaw and, and that's not going away. And she was telling me a story about Smith Wigglesworth, who was a great faith healer back in the, I think the mid 1900s, early to mid 1900s. And uh, he would pray for people and just miraculous stuff would happen. I mean, people would be instantly healed of cancer. I mean, r raised from the dead. I mean, literally, I mean, it was stuff that, and then she said he would go home at night and he would be bleeding through his pants from hemorrhoids. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's like even, you know, that verse, the, that, that passage just reminds me. It's, it's so true. It's like God can use us, you know, and we think, well, God can't use me because I'm broken. No, God can use you because you're broken. <laughs> I remember when I went through my, my first divorce, I was younger, but my, my second divorce, it was very embarrassing for me. And a lot of people knew about it. And I said, well, I guess God's not going to be able to use me. But yeah, he has. And I think it reminds me of Charles Stanley of when, when I've heard him talking. He said that since Charles Stanley went through his divorce, he said more people now feel like they're able to relate to him. Yeah, I dearly love that passage you, you just quoted. And uh, for those of you who are Calvary listeners, you know, that like me and you, we went to Calvary, you would know who Mark Quartz is. Well, his son's name is John Quartz. And, and John was a good friend. You know, he's moved away. He's still a good friend. But when I got the brain abscess, he came and brought me that verse. And when he showed it to me, you know, through your weakness, you know, he's going to be made strong. And I can't even relate how many times what God did through me, for me, through me, whatever you want to say, during that time, it was through my weakness that he was made strong. And people can relate. They can really pretty hard to, to relate to this superpower Christian that can all do everything. But they can relate to you when you fail and you break and you're weak and all these other things. And so God ends up the hero of the story when I'm weak. And I love what Paul put there. I mean, it's, it's always been a treasure and I'll never forget who gave it to me. I mean, you read it, but when somebody like a good friend comes and says, here, this verse is for you in this time, it, it's a treasure, man. It is, and uh, I think about all of the dreams that we've had, and you know, if if they do start to come true, and and I was talking to Eleni yesterday, and and she said, Mike, can you can you imagine people who have worked their whole lives to build up, store up wealth, and they and she said, in a matter of moments, it could be all gone. 
Oh, has somebody experienced that personally? <laughs> You're right, I lost the dealership. Yeah. Been down that road, been there. Yeah. And, and and wow, that's another place that you can be broken and God will show up for you miraculously. Because like you said, when God's all you have, you know, when, when God's all you need, then that's all you'll want. You know, it's just, it's a it's beautiful. You, you said it so much better. What, it, what is it when, uh, it was J.D., when you never know that God is all you need until God is all you have. But I, but I can imagine, you know, maybe somebody who's listening, if they're, if you're putting your hope in money or you're putting your hope in, in sex or your marriage or something else, I mean, all of that stuff could fall apart. There's no promise at all that things are going to continue to go well. But it's amazing that when you have the hope of Jesus Christ and you have the hope of eternal life, yeah, things may get tough, things may be bad, but we know, we know that when we die, we're going to go to heaven. And if somebody's never given their life to Christ, I think right now would be a, a wonderful opportunity, Robin. Yeah, all you got to do is pray because he will be there. He'll be that water when you're dying of thirst. Oh, Jesus, thank you that you are the water, the spring that comes up to living everlasting life. Lord, we pray that you would um, heal our sin and, 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 and take that upon your cross as you did and, and, and set us free. And may we may come to know you and live for you and turn our lives over to you. Lord, I thank you so much for this opportunity because truly, um, if we're apart from you, we are nothing. It's kind of like, if not for God, not for God. Imagine having peace of mind. In these turbulent times, peace of mind may be the most valuable of all assets. Feeling secure in your financial future is worth its weight in gold and in emotion. Liberty Bankers Insurance Group can help provide you with that most precious life-affirming sense of security. We work hard to create smart and innovative life, health, and financial plans that help ensure your family of not just the stability that you deserve, but the future potential you desire. To create a generational legacy of peace of mind. Liberty Bankers Insurance Group for life. Not all products available in all states. Visit lbig.com for additional terms and conditions. This is the Truth Network.